I'm Martin Westwell. I'm the Chief Executive of the SACE Board. Hi, I'm Stuart Mossman, Chief Executive Officer of SATAC. We've had lots of questions about uh, what's going to be happening with the SACE this year and uh, the ATAR and university admissions. So we've got together to spend a couple of minutes just to try and answer some of your questions and uh, give you a bit of information about what we're thinking about for this year. One for Martin. Rowan from Darwin High School wants to know, is there going to be a national approach to the way Year 12 is generally is going to be assessed this year or will it be state by state? We've all, across all the states and territories, decided that we're going to have a, a common approach. We're all committed to doing exams this year. We're going to focus on the learning, going to make sure that uh, that's occurring throughout the year and focus on the exams. We're all thinking across the country about mm, we're going to have to make some little changes to some of the curriculum and some of the assessment. Uh, and that really is going to depend on how things turn out, how long um, schools are affected for, uh, but we are all working across it to make sure that we've got a consistency across the country. All right, this one's for Stuart from Maddie from Emmanuel College. Uh, will the ATAR go ahead? And if not, how will we be able to apply to university? So yes, great question. Thanks, Maddie. Um, the ATAR will go ahead. That's certainly the intention and that will happen nationally, not just locally. Uh, obviously, we'll see how things unfold over the course of the year. So Martin and I will work very closely to make sure that things remain on track to enable the ATAR to be calculated and, and distributed. Um, we'll also be working with our interstate counterparts to make sure that the ATAR is done consistently as it is every year. Abby from Banksia Park International High School wants to know what is going to happen with tests and exams, especially if there is an extended lockdown. We are going to do exams and we'll carry on with some of the tests. Of course, uh, well, the challenge for us is how are we going to, how are we going to do it? How are we going to get you together uh, to do those exams? Um, we know that there are other ways of doing supervised tests. You know, this isn't a problem just for South Australia. We're dealing with this across the world. Um, so we're learning from each other and we will find ways of uh, supervising tests. Um, of course, we'll have to see with exams just where we are. We might be back in school um, by the end of the year. We might add a little bit of time and push them back a bit, uh, but we're still gonna do the exams one way or another. All right, we've got a question from uh, Amy at Seaview High School. How will exams run and what will be the expectations on students if we can't all be in the same room to do it? So there's a challenge about how we do uh, exams, but we're finding solutions. We know we can supervise tests and exams in other ways, perhaps in the tr traditional way. We can use technology. Um, we're exploring some of those solutions uh, right now. Of course, what we want to really make sure is that the learning occurs uh, in year 12, and that's why we're uh, holding on to the exams, to make sure that whatever learning you're doing is not only valuable, but is valued in the SACE as well. Okay, question from Ethan from Seaview High School. How would bonus points and compensation for ATAR work? Are some subjects going to be given more compensation because they require more teacher input? Thanks for the question, Ethan. Um, so maybe if I deal with the ATAR first, uh, the ATAR is calculated consistently across the whole country and it actually takes into account everybody together um, it, studying at the same time. It's actually a selection rank used only for a very specific purpose, which is university entry, and it's not a score, so it's not a grade um, as you will receive through the SACE. So um, naturally, we'll have a look at what unfolds over the course of the year, and should any adjustments need to be considered, we'll take those into account, and we'll do those uniformly, um, both here in South Australia and Northern Territory, but also across the country. Um, what we are anticipating, though, as Martin um, is explaining, has explained also, is that uh, any adjustments that may need to be uh, made in recognition of um, different circumstances for students studying through the SACE uh, would be dealt with within the SACE before the certificate's awarded. I, I can assume I can say that. Yeah, Martin. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, this is from Sean from Nazareth Catholic Community. Uh, thanks for your question, Sean. Will the SACE board take into account that many of the primary sources organised for research projects uh, might be pulling out from communication? Yeah, I can see it's tricky, isn't it? Um, uh, if we've made some contacts and then they're busy and they're doing other things, then that might be more difficult now. But of course, we've got a whole range of uh, primary sources. It could be 
speeches, interviews, uh, documents that people have written, uh, TED Talks, you know, as long as it's coming from the, that primary source, from what's actually going on at the time, the researcher, the thinker, the person that's uh, had the experience that you want to draw on. Um, I, th I think there's enough primary sources. You might have to pivot, you might have to shift a bit and not uh, use the person that you were thinking about. But I think there's plenty out there that you could use in your research project. Okay, Layla from Renmark High School. Uh, how would I complete 140 hours of work placement in an aged care facility as part of my course and still achieve my Cert 3 by the end of the year? That's a great question. There's a real challenge there, isn't there? Because we know that uh, 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 students have been asked not to attend places like aged care facilities to do things like VET or you know uh, other aspects of their work. Um, we're going to have to get the balance right with this. Um, of course, as always, we want to focus on the learning. We want to make sure that um, you've been set up for your next steps, uh, whatever that might be in the workplace. Um, we're all working closely together. I know Stuart works with TAFE. Um, we're working with TAFE in the universities. We're all working together to make sure that that pathway is going to be open to you. So, for example, um, you might not get enough credits uh, through your VET to get your SACE this year. But what we'll make sure is that you've got a pathway, you've got a transition into going into the workplace, continuing your qualification, and then when you've got that qualification, you can provide the evidence of that to us at the SACE board, and we'll provide you with your SACE certificate. So the timings might be out a little bit, and we already do that actually for a lot of VET for students who go on into the next year before they get the SACE. But you'll be able to do that, but just maybe not in the way that we'd expected or planned for this year. All right, next question. This is from Nyati at uh, Seaview High School. Uh, what about the UCAT? <laughs> That's probably for me. Um, so the UCAT uh, isn't actually run by SATAC. Um, it is a completely separate test and it's really only used for those high competitive courses like medicine and dentistry. Uh, but all the information we have is that the UCAT will proceed as planned. Um, there is a, a separate website that you can go to and there's a lot of FAQs there and it, it talks about what their plans are for the UCAT this year. Um, we will, however, still uh, marry up any information that comes from the UCAT, the results that come from there, uh, together with our um, ATAR and the interview process, which is also used for, for entry to medicine and dentistry. Okay, question from Ricardo from Darwin High School. If there are blanket special provisions applied for COVID-19, how does that affect some of us who, are already, who already have special provisions for other reasons, such as mental health or family situations? So Martin, maybe you can respond to that first and then I might add a couple of comments afterwards. Yeah, That's great, okay. great. Uh, look, um, there's lots going on at the moment um, and there has been some disruption to learning and we recognise that students are probably feeling a bit uh, unsure and maybe even a little bit anxious as well about how the year is going to unfold. Um, that's natural because of the uncertainty uh, that we're feeling. Um, what we don't want to do is to do special provisions um, school by school for different schools to be making different changes. So what we're going to do is essentially the changes that we make to the curriculum or the assessment are kind of like a special provision over the whole system across South Australia and the Northern Territory. Um, and so we'll again focusing on the learning, making sure that you can access the learning, you can access the assessment, really that's what special provisions um, are all about. Um, so we'll put that in place across the system. Um, specifically, people might have their own existing special provisions uh, because of different personal situations um, and all of those will hold. Um, so, you know, they're not there to level the playing field in some way, they're there to make sure you've got access to the, uh, to the learning and the assessment. And so that's what we really want to focus on. But if you've got your own special provisions, they'll still hold. And of course, it's not just about the SACE, we also will think about that in university admissions as well. Absolutely. So we have existing provisions uh, when you apply to go to university, uh, if there are special circumstances, considerations that need to be taken into account as part of the application process, we have that already and that will continue on. Um, to the point about having a system-wide provision, uh, to the extent that if events unfold in a way that um, none of us can probably predict right now, uh, if there needs to be something taken into account on a system-wide basis for admissions processes as well, we'll do that. So we'll work closely with the SACE board, Martin and I talk very regularly. Um, we'll work with the universities. We'll actually put something in place to make sure that nobody's um, not so much disadvantaged, but everyone's treated equally and fairly. 
All right, next question. Uh, this one's from Angus from Emmanuel College. Um, he's asking, what happens if, for some reason, there aren't any SACE results and we can't calculate an ATAR? Uh, certainly, we're working um, very hard uh, together to make sure that the SACE can be completed, and, um, and Martin and the team are doing a great job there. So the intent will be, of course, that the SACE is completed and an ATAR and university entry is not, not challenged. Having said that, if it is a worst case scenario as has been described, um, we will work and are already working with the universities to look at potential scenarios that might eventuate, that might mean that we change the date of applications, it might mean that we need to come together and do some shared um, learning, um, bridging learning in between completing the year and commencing university studies. Uh, we'll look at what that means for results, when they might be available, um, how they might be um, determined or, or assessed in order to make offers to places in university. We don't know what it's going to look like at the moment, but rest assured, we're all working very closely and very um, frequently in frequent contact to look at potential scenarios. And as soon as the picture starts to become a bit clearer over the course of the year, we'll put some of those things in place and communicate those out so that everybody knows where they stand. Right now, we don't know but rest assured we'll make something work. Yeah, we've been working really closely together to make sure that in our scenario planning, uh, we're ready, you know, so no matter what happens, we'll be ready to support you to make an effective transition into universities or TAFE. Okay, a question from Nick from Seaview High School. Uh, one for you, Martin. How will practicals be graded if we cannot do them at school, but we can do them at home? Yeah, great. So um, we recognise that this is quite a tricky thing, um, that in lots of the subjects uh, there's a practical or there's something that you're expected to do outside of school. Uh, we recognise that some students might have facilities, equipment, stuff um, that makes that easy and for some students they're just not going to be able to get hold of that. So that's something that we're really thinking about and dealing with. Um, it's quite a complex problem and so what we don't want to do is just come up with a simple answer. So what we're doing is we're working with your teachers, we're getting all the teachers of particular subjects together um, and having a conversation about well what should we do about this. One of the reasons is that we want to make sure that it's doable, it's pragmatic, it's achievable in the way that your teachers are, are teaching you. Um, and the other thing is that we really want to hold tight on to uh, the learning. Uh, that promise that we made to you that you were going to learn some stuff in these subjects. So the practicals might be a bit different, it might not be so much hands-on, it might be something online. Uh, if you were asked to collaborate, that might be, again, using technology to do that in some way. Uh, so we're, we're really mindful of this issue. Um, what we're really focused on, of course, is the learning and the fairness, and we'll have some advice for your, for your teachers uh, really soon. Okay, question from Matthew from Nazareth Community College. If VET is shut down, will we still get SACE points for this VET? Mm -hmm. So, uh, people are doing VET in different ways. Um, and if people are doing VET towards uh, go carrying on to TAFE for an apprenticeship or something like that, they might finish that VET off um, next year. And so, when you do that, you can give us that evidence of your learning and we'll put that in the SACE and you can uh, get your SACE. So you might not get your SACE this year, but we'll value all of the learning you've done this year and all of the learning you do uh, next year and in sub subsequent years to be able to provide you with a SACE. So it might not be quite as planned, but you'll get that. Uh, for other students, I know they might be doing VET um, just as part of the learning and using that to go on to university maybe and, and they're looking for an ATAR. We recognize that you might not finish your qualification um, within the before you finish year 12 and so what we'll try what we're trying to do what we're looking at is how we can recognize some of the units that you might have completed even though you might not finish the whole qualification and if you get 20 credits of VET in that way we'll, we'll make sure that we can one way or another uh, recognize that and I think that applies to the ATAR as well yeah absolutely so again um, exceptional circumstances that we're in, but I think if that scenario you've just described, Martin, um, were to unfold, then clearly we'd be comfortable looking at that and saying, well, how can we still provide students with an ATAR so that they can apply for courses and obviously go on for further study? So um, we don't know what it looks like yet, as we keep on saying, nobody does, 
but uh, I think we've got to be fairly pragmatic and it's in everybody's best interest to enable that learning journey to continue as seamlessly as possible. Yeah, so I think the, the important thing is that we're, we're working together, getting the maximum flexibility to make sure that the learning that you've already done is valued in the SACE and valued in the ATAR from the university admissions as well. Shut down.